Hi, this is Matt with ApplianceParts.com. Today we'll be showing you how to repair your appliance. Remember, anytime you work on an appliance, make sure it's unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. In this video, we're going to show you how to change out the roller shaft. It's going to be a very easy repair. It should only take a few minutes to show you how to do it. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can click on the link below or get it at AppliancePartsPros.com. When you open up the package, you're going to get the new roller shaft. The main reason you'll be changing out the roller shaft is if the bearing as it was going bad wore a big groove in the top of it. First thing we have to do is lift up the lint screen cover to gain access to the two screws. If you have the type of lint screen that has the cover built into it, just pull it out and remove the screws. Then we have to take a putty knife and about two inches in from each corner there's a little locking tab that you have to press in and release so you can lift up the top. When you're pressing the release clip in, make sure you go above these two tabs and press in. If you go below them, you're not going to hit the release. Then we have to release the door switch, wiring harness, take your screwdriver and release the clip. Then we have to remove the two screws that hold the front panel on. It's a 5 16 inch hex head. You can use a socket or a nut driver. Now that the two screws are out of the front panel and the door switch is disconnected, we can take the front panel off. So you can pull it forward a little bit and it actually rests on two little clips down at the base of the machine. So you need to lift it up. And there's one on each side. If you have the type of dryer that has two panels, the large main panel and the smaller access panel, you're going to have to use a small screwdriver or a putty knife, stick it behind the smaller access panel and pop it out. Once you pop it off, there's going to be two door springs, one on each side. If you have those, take them off and then on the bottom of the big panel there's going to be a screw on each side that you need to loosen up so you can pull the panel off don't take the screws all the way out just loosen them enough to get the panel out in order to get the belt off the pulley press the pulley towards the outside of the dryer and take the belt off the pulley now that we have the idler pulley off the belt we can grab the belt and support the drum and pull it out of the front of the dryer. Now we have access to the inside of the dryer so we can do the repair. To get to the shaft we have to remove the support bracket and this little shield. Moving the shield out of the way will make it easier to pull it out. Now that we have the shield out of the way, we can remove the support bracket. It's also held in by a 5 16 inch screw to the bottom of the machine. Once we have that off, we can take a small screwdriver and remove the Tinnerman clip that holds the bracket on. Now we can go ahead and remove the rings that hold the wheel on. Pull the wheel off and remove the rear clip. Now that we have the clip and the wheel off, we can go ahead and remove the bolt from the back. In order to access the inside of the back of the machine, we have to remove all the screws that hold the back panel on with a quarter inch nut driver. To access the rear of the dryer, remove all screws from the large panel and then the smaller access panel can be lifted out of place. Now with all the screws out, we can remove this small panel so it doesn't fall off and then take off the large back panel. 
To get the shaft out, we have to remove this nut. It's a 9 16. Once you break it free, you can probably spin it with your hands. And take off the washer. Here's the old shaft next to the new shaft. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can get it at appliancepartspros.com. In order to put the new shaft in, first thing we're going to have to do is replace the washer on it and then put it back in the mounting hole. And in order to get the nut on the back, we're going to have to hold the shaft on the front so it doesn't spin. Make sure you grab it on the tip, not up here where the roller goes. While you're holding the shaft on the front, reach around back and tighten down the nut. Now that we have the nut tightened down on the back, we have to put our retaining clip over the first groove in the shaft. Once you get it past the first groove, you can just push it back into the rear groove. You can push the wheel back on and the front retaining ring. Once you have the wheel and the clips on, we can put in the support bracket and put the tinnerman back on that holds it on the end of the shaft. And then we have to put the screw that holds it back into the floor. Now that we have the support bar back in, we can put in our heat shield. This clip here goes right up into this slot. And then we can put the two screws in that hold it in place. Now that we have the roller shaft installed and everything put back in, we can put the dryer back together. To put the drum back in, lift it up by the belt and guide it through the front panel. And then you have to set it down onto the roller wheels making sure that you don't pinch the felt. Once you get the drum back on the rollers, you want to spin it and watch this felt and make sure none of the felt's folded underneath. Otherwise, your drum will leak out a bunch of hot air. So go ahead and lift up on the idler pulley and push it towards the side of the machine. Then create a loop in the belt. Which you can pull over the motor pulley. Now that we're done with the repair, we can put the front panel back on. Remember, the front panel locks on to these little teeth that stick out. So we need to line those up and then push the panel down on them. And while you're doing that, you got to remember to lift the drum up. And you may have to wiggle a little bit because you're going to have to get the drum to line up with that front seal so the panel pushes on all the way. So you may have to wiggle the drum a little bit to get it in all the way. Once you have the front panel on, you can go ahead and put your 5 16 screws back in and attach the front panel. Once you have both screws in and the front panel secure, we can reconnect the door switch wiring harness. When you're reinstalling the front panel on the type of dryer that has two panels in the front, you have to first put the main panel onto the front, setting it onto the two screws, and then tighten those screws down, and then tighten down the upper screws. Reconnect the springs on both sides if you took them off. You can go ahead and slide the kick plate back onto the lower tabs and rotate it back in and snap it into place. With the front panel back on, we can lift the top back over and press it into place onto the locking tabs. Once we have those in, we can go ahead and 
line up the screw holes for the lint screen. Now that we're done with the repair, we can put on the large panel and the small access panel. Just go ahead and lift it into place. So you have to line it up and set it on the pipe. Once you have it lined up, you can take your smaller access panel, take the small access panel, stick that little tab in the slot, and then put this one screw in, and that'll hold it in place while you put in the rest of the screws. Now that we're done repairing the appliance, we can plug it back in and take it for a test spin. Thanks for joining us for another successful repair brought to you by appliancepartspros.com. Check out our other repair videos on our site, Facebook, and YouTube.